Ciao ragazzi, welcome back here, Claudio Giganti with Giga Racing, uh, MotoGP Talk. We're talking about uh, uh, qualifying and also um, FP3 and FP4. Uh, it was a great day on the racetrack. Everybody's really, really close, guys. I mean, uh, I was looking at uh, lap times, and you know, I'm a number guy. And if, if we look at FP3, which is, uh, uh, these days is a minor, uh, qualifying section okay you want to get everybody wants to get in, in, in straight in Q2 because Q1 is a lottery now because because all the riders are so close to each other and only the first two uh, are going through Q2 um, it's really hard to make it I mean uh, when I look at uh, uh, FP3 we have 11 riders okay in two tenths of a second Okay, so if you go from uh, uh, Nakagami all the way to Franco Mobidelli, that we'll talk in a minute, he ain't got 11 at the end of the section, okay? Uh, Morbidelli was only 2.35 tenths of a second behind. So the field is really close. So when you're that close, going through a, a, a section uh, in, uh, in Q1, a, a, a very risky. You can get into yellow flags, you can get into a, um, you know, a, a cancel lap due to uh, exceeded uh, track limit. So there is a, there's a lot of variables. So everybody wants to. So in Q3, we saw Nakagami wrap on the, up on the top uh, uh, the time sheet. Now Nakagami, let's talk briefly about Nakagami. Nakagami uh, actually, I don't know if you guys know, but is using last year uh, frame okay so he went back with the Honda and his both his bikes have the last year frame okay so he feels he can be faster with the last year frame which he doesn't have the carbon fiber um, addition that the new frame has so Nakagami uh, on top of the time sheet has a really really good lap in FP3 at 136.9 really nice almost uh, almost uh, 137 flat now in FP3 what happened, we had Morbidelli there uh, that um, he had two lap cancel uh, due to exceeding track limit. <clears throat> now, the two uh, lap times that they got canceled, first there was a, a 137.083, which if he would have got the lap time, that is the exact same lap time that Mari Dignale finished that section in sixth. So it would have been minimum six with that lap time. But then he almost broke the rap record and he had a 136.684, just almost a couple of minutes before the section handed, uh, which definitely would have put it on top because it's uh, three times faster uh, then uh, the Nakagami, okay? So it definitely would have been him on top of the time sheet for Q3. And the lap right after, he was still pushing in the third section of the track. It was actually uh, a 0 0.46 uh, of a second, uh, 0.046, sorry, 0 0.046 of a second uh, better than his previous lap time. So that lap time, it was a good lap time too. But he made a bad judgment call. He actually quit that the lap because he thought he had the other one. And I see him that more and more often. L riders get a lap time, it's a good lap time. They have a chance to do another lap time. And what do they do? They back off the gas because they have one lap. Now, I hope the riders can see this and learn. Like, if you have done a good lap time and you're in the in the groove to do another good lap time, do another one, run another one, okay? Because just in case your previous one get canceled, then due to flags, due to uh, exceeding track limit, you still have a chance to be a front. Well, Morbidelli backed off the gas, and obviously the lap time was canceled as well, and it, it, it put him all in a, in a state of mind that, you know, a rider that get taken away two laps, yes, he said he admitted in the press conference it was his fault, but in the heat of the moment, it kind of destabilized you a little bit. Now, all of a sudden, he's doing FP4. Um, in FP4, uh, it was, his best lap time it was a 138. Now, 
His lap time was a 138 due to what? We don't know because it could have been that he didn't have tires to run, enough tires to run for um, that, that FP4 to have a good lap time as well. So maybe he was using older tires or harder tires, but not his ideal tires because he knew already that he needed more tires for to go through Q1 and then Q2. So he actually said in the press conference as well that were a little bit struggling, it was a little confusing uh, to get the other tires, put on tire warmers, get up to temperature, such and such. He actually said in the press conference that you probably heard it, that because it was a warm day, um, uh, the tires were okay and it got to, to temperature on time. So I just said the word tire, which is uh, one of my last favorite to, uh, word to say these days. I'm saying that because again, in FP3, when everybody was pushing uh, to get uh, into straight into Q1, we saw a major, some major crashes, and one was um, Mark Marcus again. It's upsetting, guys. It's upsetting because the tires are not where can be. You have no uh, sensitivity of when it's gonna let go, and it gets let go all of the sudden. Sometimes just. Even before the hardest point of the corner is when you're in the middle of the corner. No, we saw a lot of crashes that literally as soon you start tipping it in, you lose contact. And that is crazy. I'm sorry. I got no justification for that. The tires, this is becoming a safety issue now. And then they were talking to the press conference about, oh, but, uh, you know, the truck safe that we're going that fast. Well, is anybody focusing on the tires? Maybe be the issue of all those fast high-speed crashes. And uh, that could be probably part of the reason as well for all the crashes. But nobody said anything about that. But yes, everybody's pointing finger. One of the journalists, you know, was saying is that it's the European trucks that have problems. Well, what are we going to do? We have beautiful trucks. Their, their trucks are being used for, you know, um, decades and now we're not gonna go race there because the runoff are not big enough in some circumstances there's no you know way to make the runoff bigger so I don't think they should be blaming it on the track uh, I was happy to hear that uh, um, Jack Miller mentioned that uh, they have done a lot of improvement to the track there is now the airbags barrier uh, so if they are moving into taking steps to uh, protect the riders more but please try also take in consideration that these tires, obviously, there is some issues with it. They let go all of a sudden, the rider doesn't know. And, and the worst feeling of a rider is when you don't know how much that tire is going to hold. Okay? And we saw quite a few moments today. So that covered um, the FP3 uh, and FP4. Um, F, uh, sorry, uh, Q1 rolled out. Uh, everybody was out there trying to uh, uh, to get into Q2. Uh, Morbidelli came on top and uh, uh, Binder came on top. I was, uh, um, you know, I was a little bit uh, sad to see that uh, Valentino. You saw it at the second in the second round and that and the Q1. Uh, he actually took a toll uh, from Morbidelli. You can clearly see that Morbidelli was trying to help. Well, that's my feeling anyway about it. But he still couldn't put a good lot together. So I'm not going to go back and talk about Valentino. I think I talked about it enough yesterday. And all the rider that didn't make it through, it's Mark Markets. Uh, I think that crash really uh, shook him up on Q3, everybody, sorry, in uh, FP3, everybody said that, you know, Mark Markets always right at the limit, but you know what, that crash was pretty bad, he impacted the barrier, okay, it was very fortunate to don't get hurt, okay, so um, on uh, qualifying, again, everybody really, really close, if we look at the um, uh, score and the, and the time, lap time, now, from position 1 to position 10, which is Johan Mir, um, there is uh, basically 4 tenths of a second, guys. No even half a second. That is crazy. Everybody is so close. What they did, they, they leveled out MotoGP for the show, for, for you know, the excitement. More riders can win. And they level it out. So, 
I feel like there is a lot more riders that can ride fast now with the new regulation, with the tires that we use. There is no somebody that exceed over another person. You know, with electronics, they're all the same. We flatted out all the riders. So it's easier to put a good lap time, I'll say. And that's why you see everybody so close. That's my personal opinion. So Quattorano, back here, guys. It, again, it's a, a top of the time shit. He's really, really on fire. I think we're gonna see good tomorrow. But I'm saying, again, watch from Morbidelli because Morbidelli lap time, they got scrap away, which was a, a 136.684. Well, that would have beat um, Fabio Quattararo uh, pole position, okay? Almost by a tenth of a second. So I know Morbidelli had the lap uh, pace. He didn't get together. I think it was a little bit emotionally, mentally, um, the whole situation, the tires, the struggle. And the other. So he wasn't in a stable uh, state of mind. And uh, I was worried to see him crashing, but I gladly no, didn't see him crashing. Uh, Jack Miller, guys, you guys know I don't like uh, Jack much. I mean, how did he get to a uh, third spot? Well, guess what? He came out behind uh, Francesco Bagnaia. He trailed him, got a good lap time. That's basically it, guys, because um, I didn't expect him uh, to be in the top three. But yes, he did... Uh, a trail of uh, Banyaya and he managed to uh, to get up there. If we look at the time sheets from uh, Q3, he barely made it, Jack Miller, to Q2. Uh, and he made it only because uh, Franco Morbidelli got two laps canceled. Because if any uh, either lap didn't get canceled, Jack Miller would have been in Q1 and we don't know if we would have made it through. So all of a sudden he finds himself in uh, Q2 and then if you look at the lap time, also in uh, in FP4, he had the head eight uh, best lap, eight tenths of a second behind. So he definitely, I don't think he has a lap uh, pace. During the race, riders are always doing uh, a lot better. So we might be seeing him up front again. In uh, Q2, uh, Zarco, three tenths behind. I mean, guys, the first 10, as I said, in four tenths of a second. Tomorrow, it's anybody's game. But in uh, all said and done, my prediction for tomorrow, so we can wrap it up. Um, my podium is these three riders, guys. Quadraro, Morbidelli, and Francesco Bagnaia. The three of them has the best pace out there, okay? Um, if I would have to choose, I will say that I'll put Morbidelli on the top step. He has a lot to prove. He really wants to win. I put Morbidelli on top step. I put Quadraro second. And I put Francesco Bagnaia definitely third. Okay. Let's uh, talk tomorrow after the race, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. Subscribe. Like the video if you like it. And we take every comment that you uh, like to write down as well. Thank you for watching uh, MotoGP Talk with Claudio Gigante and Giga Racing. See you tomorrow. Ciao.